As I begin the conversation, I want to say all through the weekend, we've been talking about what humans can do for humans. We talked about health for humans. We talked about, um, you know, mental health, emotional health. But we really didn't even integrate the most important aspect of what really we need for our health. That's in my view, and scientifically it has been proven, that the natural world is really important and significant for our emotional well-being and our spiritual well-being. Humanity has moved in an entirely different direction um, and Hinduism is one of the most amazing philosophies that we can apply and integrate in our day-to-day -day lives. It's such a practical, amazing philosophy. And yet, this amazing philosophy is being misinterpreted and misused under the guise of culture and religion in our own beautiful country called India. And so it was very um, uh, upsetting for me to watch what I witnessed, and I decided to do something about it. But before I even launch that conversation, I want to say this, which I kind of alluded to, that we are actually woven into this incredible web of life. And we are only one strand. There are so many other species that are part of this incredible strand called this web of life. And yet, we have started behaving, we have multiplied so dramatically, 7.3 billion and counting. And we're at a point where we have forgotten that we depend on other species for our own survival. And so this is why I wanted to bring out this web of life, because it is so integral for our own survival. We are categorically decimating every single strand in the web of life by decimating different species. And ultimately, what's going to happen? Only human strand is going to be dangling, and it's going to collapse. So we need to understand that we are so deeply connected with this web of life. And um, as, as soon as the second slide comes on, one second. So we can really reflect on that for one quick moment and think about what are we doing? We've evolved medically, we've evolved technologically, we've evolved economically, and politically, of course. We are so focused on raising money to do this, raising money to do that, which is all great. We need that. But what are we doing to integrate the natural world in the economy? And that's what my conversation is going to be about. It's going to be about the economy of nature. And so what are we going to do to create this economy of nature, right? Earth has existed for over 4.5 billion years, OK? And humanity, or our ancestors, they evolved just 6 million years back. And this modern humans that we call has been around for only 200,000 years. And within the 200,000 years, just think about the industrial revolution, the agricultural revolution, the scientific revolution, and all kinds of religious revolutions. And we have really forgotten the basic foundation of where we come from, and that is the natural world. It's our one and only home. We live in different homes, and we have great condos and mansions, and we think that is our home. That is but a minuscule portion of, of our massive home, which is our planet Earth. And we have forgotten about our non-human brothers and sisters, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So again, I just mentioned that blinded by material wealth, we have decimated so many aspects. We are seeing climate change. We have talked about, I don't know if you're aware, but we are undergoing the sixth mass extinction. And it has been proven that it is human-induced. We are categorically capturing animals and using them for economic purpose. We have forgotten their intrinsic value. Now, what is the intrinsic value? It is the ethical or philosophical value of living beings. And it, we are talking about the value in and of itself, not how it will benefit humans. We don't realize how much they value, how, how valuable they are. We look at a, a plot of forest and we say, oh, that's a wasteland. We've got to develop that. But we don't realize that it is an ecosystem that we need for our own survival. And so that's what I'm going to talk about, the intrinsic value of 
the natural world, but beyond that, the intrinsic value of elephants. Why? Because they happen to be my soul animals and I love them. But why? Because they are an integral part of Indian culture. And why else? Because they are just on the brink of extinction. They've been, de they've been declared an endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And so I'm particularly talking about the Asian elephants. You have the Asian elephants and the African elephants. African elephants are being decimated for their um, tusks. And they use it to make all kinds of cultural stuff, again, under the guise of culture. And they're making artifacts and even chopsticks. And that is the African elephant. So that is directly related with China. And I won't even go there. But we talk about what we are doing as an Indian community to these animals. 55 million years ago, there were uh, about 300 species. And now we have only three species. Why? Because we have decimated them for economic value and for what we make. Um, and so what can we do? And why are these elephants so incredibly important? Well, because to begin with, as I said, um, they are an endangered species. And um, there are only 40,000 of them approximately, I would say, left in the wild. And out of the 40,000 40, of them, 27,000 are in our beautiful India, in the jungles of India. And so it becomes a moral obligation for all of us to protect our heritage animal. It has been declared a heritage animal by the Indian government. And what are we doing to this amazing heritage animal? Well, they are being illegally captured and for ivory, of course, they're being exploited, but in India, they're not culled, they're not killed for ivory. They are being captured, torn from their families, and they're being used to, uh, used in cultural rituals and festivals. This is the Holy Bhagavad Gita. I read this every single day, one scripture every single day, and I try to apply that scripture in my daily life. Not a single Hindu scripture has mentioned that elephants need to be used in cultural festivals. Nothing, not a single Hindu scripture. So it is being misinterpreted under the guise of culture and religion. And that to me is a problem because it's not only tarnishing my beautiful Hindu philosophies, but it's also decimating my favorite animal. And it has to be all of our favorite animal because it's a cultural icon. And this is what our Isha Upanishad um, that was uh, 1500 BC, I mean, it said that the universe along with its creatures belongs to the land and none of us are any superior than any other creatures on the planet. We need to understand our role. We need to really honor and respect the role of other creatures on the planet also. And our, or our own Mahatma Gandhi said that the greatness of the nation is, you know, the way they treat their animals is, is, is um, Anyway, so what I'm doing is I am putting together this documentary called Gods and Shackles, and um, it is going to be exploring not only the, um, the abhorrent torture and barbaric way of treatment that these captive elephants are being subjected to, but also how the wild elephants live so you can see the comparison. And it is going to be released in the late fall or early 2017. And, um, uh, it has won numerous awards, um, and I don't want to talk about all of the awards. It was nominated at the United Nations. That's a quick film synopsis, and I have to really, really kind of go fast, but that's the basic thing. It's a feature-length documentary, and it, it exposes the um, torture and neglect of these iconic animals and under the guise of culture and religion, because people need to be aware of it, and people need to know that we can continue to do this. And again, like I said, we have a moral obligation. So the goal is, of course, to first of all, create awareness and education, because without that, we can't do anything. And that's my whole purpose of producing this documentary. And um, share it, it has won numerous awards. Um, at the end of the day, my ultimate goal is to be able to release them from their shackles of slavery as we had it for human slavery and release them into a sanctuary where they can thrive. So those are some of the awards that we have won. We were nominated at the United Nations on the World Wildlife Day on March the 3rd, and I'm very excited about that. So here's some food for thought as we leave, okay? We talk about material wealth. We talk about 
um, the inheritance that we are going to leave behind for our children and grandchildren. What are you going to leave behind for your children and grandchildren? If you leave behind all this material wealth and possessions, and at the end of the day we leave behind a sick planet, how can they enjoy it? And so that's what I want you to think about. We need to start thinking about the natural treasures as an inheritance that we leave behind for our children and grandchildren. And that's the food for thought for you to take back. The medical, the technological, economic evolution is great. We have to evolve consciously and realize that we are now a part in this, stra uh, in this incredible web of life. And so I'm, I'm proposing that we develop a nature's economy where we integrate the natural world and all of the other species. And that's my food for thought for you for the weekend. And thank you so much for listening.